Son of a butt. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, the show that brings you the latest and greatest in all of Graydon's news from all over the planet. I'm your host, Steve, and joined as always by the amazing Smashly. We are here. Uh, we are going to do some stuff. We're going to chit chat. We're going to talk about the news. We're going to have a blast. You're going to be glad you stopped by because tonight's uh, uh, smooth liquor night uh, where everyone gets a glass of schnapps. <laughs> some sort of schnapps. It's because. Because, dang it, if you can buy it at Kroger, it's probably safe to drink. Uh, hello. Hello, hello. Man, uh, so you start off a show with a, with a mess, and you just continue. If we're going to do a half-hour power, um, why is everybody upset about the schnapps, first of all? I don't know. Groove, thank you for resubs. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the resubs and for the cheer. <laughs> I love that we get cheers and resubs when we screw up. Like, it's not like these guys did something amazing. Let's go ahead and give them some cheers and some subs. It's like Steven jacked up the intro again. Let's go ahead and let him have it. Oh, I want cream soda. Cream that soda. wasn't random. Ace said cream soda. Cream soda sounds good. And then you start drinking it, and you're like, okay, now I'm going to go throw up. Thank you, everyone, <laughs> for the beverage. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. You know it. You know it. <laughs> Wait, so schnapps. Okay, so my dad was an optometrist, and we used to, like, the perks of being in the American Optometric Association was awesome because we would go to these parties with dad. And it was basically a bunch of doctors that had gone to school forever and were, like, worried and uptight during the week because they didn't want to poke anybody's eyes out. And so, like, at Christmas and Thanksgiving, we had these cool parties, and, like, they, they used it for their CUEs, but... I mean, no. yeah, whatever. <laughs> but they always, we, we would go to the uh, the White Oak Country Club, and they always had, like, the parfait glasses with this really, like, I don't like eggy ice cream. I like, like, milky, creamy, almost chalky ice cream. And it was, like, the perfect chalky ice cream with, like, these huge, like, squishy cookies that were just, just rigid enough to, like, sit like this in the glass. But they mm. would, they would drizzle it with peppermint schnapps and i was like the, they i went there the second time and i'm and they had it again and i looked at the the lady and I'm like what can we do about not having that shit on <laughs> my cookies and ice cream <laughs> <laughs> what did she tell you when you approached her in such a such she a got me kind. too with zero schnapps and from then on there was no green peppermint like toothpaste on my ice cream i like the way that you approach people like most people are just yes i'd like the the peanut butter sandwich minus the crust please but you're like hey can we nix the crust on the sandwich <laughs> or you go like like why hey so why or you walk I... you walk up to a waitress i'd like a peanut butter sandwich but like without the crust because it's gross and no one <laughs> should want it and then the waitress cracks up and is like you're so funny and you go yes i do a podcast on thursday nights called horseshoes and hand grenades you should check it out <laughs> actually jacob actually said something to me he's like honey Nobody knows what you mean when you walk up and say, I would like this, sans this. Yes. Like, Nobody knows what sans And I'm like, it's a word people use. He's like, yeah, you, when ordering, don't. <laughs> yeah. You used to do that when you would sit down at, at Outback. You'd be like, and nix the onion. And they're like, oh, so that's without onion? Yeah. Yep. Without onion. But you would say it so like, nix, nix the onion. <laughs> Donka Shane. And everybody's like, what are you? Are you? I don't understand. I had a friend of mine, every time we did a group order, every or every time we went out to a restaurant, like uh, when we went out to lunch, we'd sit down at the restaurant, and he'd be like, I don't know, I just want a hamburger. And she's like, what do you want on a hamburger? Well, you know, whatever. I would punch oh, him. I would punch him. I'm like, you can't tell a waiter or waitress you want whatever on your hamburger. 
because it's not helpful because they don't know what are you allergic to anything is there any flavors you don't like like give some information because it makes them make decisions they're uncomfortable with stop it what would you do like if somebody did that i would just make the hamburger I'd load like, it up I would... nope i'd load you it up what? I'd load it up. Really? I would stack that hamburger with everything we have. I put bacon, cheese, jalapeno, lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, relish, a giant egg, a peanut butter. I would put everything on it. I put everything okay. on it. I'd be say, "This is what you get for ordering a whatever burger, you big butthole." And then I'd make them pay for it because I'm not replacing that. They said whatever. I wrote it on the ticket. They can shove this burger right that up their butthole. Really really good until you started mixing the <laughs> eggs ketchup. and peanut butter oh yeah yeah, well, yeah. Okay. the ketchup the ketchup and mayonnaise ketchup and mayo mm-hmm. mayo don't chup belong together <laughs> heinz thinks it does because they now make mayo chup me and jacob ow, bought ow. some no my brain actually hurt they make what ow i don't that's not stuff i would eat on my burger whoa 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 ace I think mayo is the most disgusting thing in the history of um, condiments. I, no, Ace. I put like, I don't know, a cup and a half of mayonnaise on my burger. Like, it has to be properly lubed like a good date. Or it's not <laughs> getting near my mouth. <laughs> I need the burger to slide down my throat. Uh, and, and, I do. And like, yeah. It, need a- it needs... Yes, mayo is like, I stick mayo on french fries. I stick mayo on any sandwich. I don't put ketchup on anything, except maybe french fries. I used to love ketchup on things. It's become kind of a secondary condiment for me. Like, I'm primarily a mustard person, which usually makes everyone look at me and then throw up and then go, okay, we can continue talking now. Mustard Uh, biscuits. Mustard on tots? Mmm, mustard tots. Mustard tots. Mustard tots. And you can't put mustard ketchup on, on a hot fries? dog. Mustard on a hot dog is the jam. You know? no, I like my hot dogs like Sonic likes his hot dogs. Chili cheese. Chili baby. cheese dogs, baby. Mmm, Sonic. Mustard. Hey, good, it has to be good mustard, though. Like, it has to have the seeds in it and have, like, a good vinegar. Good. No. no. French is yellow, baby. French is yellow or bust. The only time you have deli mustard is on a deli sandwich. You don't put deli mustard on it. That's hamburger. actual mustard. Mustard seeds are like, like if you want to bite into it and have them pop and be like all yummy. Gross. And yes. Yes. Gross. You're gross. <laughs> Your mom's gross. Your face is gross. You need to relearn how to eat because that's terrible. I actually, I don't know what my face looks like because my baby's asleep in the bedroom and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going back. I've been back there three times tonight to put him down and he's nursed for four hours. Like, no, I'm just whatever. Yeah. Well, I was going to tell you to go ahead and, uh, I I mean, I was going to tell you to wipe the blood off your your cheeks before you, you know, you sat down, lest someone think you're responsible for a murder. Um, I have, I have this little vial of iodine and I put a dropper in my water a couple times a day because like my thyroid is low normal, but with PCOS, like you have lower functioning thyroid you have a lot of the symptoms of thyroid issues without you but you still are like low normal right so just iodine like iodine and l tyrosine i think is what i take in the morning yeah. whatever so jacob's jacob looked and he watched me put the dropper in. he watched me put it back in the cabinet he sat there and looked at my water for a minute and he watched it like spiral it he's like is that the blood of your enemies that you're keeping in our cabinet <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 it yes. is the uh is it tyre what's tyrosine do? Is that the one that's like Ty I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Tyrosine. I I've never heard it out loud and I don't take time to read things. It's an amino acid. The body makes yeah. tyrosine from another amino acid called phenylalanine. Uh tyrosine can also be found in dairy products, meats, fish, eggs, nuts, beans, oats, and wheat. Uh oh, it treats an inherited disorder called phenylketonuria. Called what? Down. Or PKU. People who have oh, that's what can't... they test. That's what they test babies in the um in the hospital. That's what they like stabbed his foot for. Oh yeah. Did you know that Apgar? Like you ever heard of the Apgar score? Like how your baby does when it's born? Like can it breathe? Does it do this? Blah blah blah. blah. That was a lady named Doctor Apgar. 
uh, and it's a backronym. Really? Yeah, so it means like it has like each letter means something, but it's a backronym. They just worked her name into the score name because she invented it. But it's like it it kind of blows everybody's mind. She was there's the, it's so that's called a backronym. Yeah, a backronym is when you already have the word. So USA Patriot Act, bad example, but it's a good example. Uh, is a backronym. They wanted it to be called the USA Patriot Act, so then they worked in all the words they needed to make it make sense uh, as a as an act. You know, they do that all the time. They just come up with. A I word. didn't They're know like, that. Was, like when I write, I do that. There's this. Well, never mind. Anyway, I always think I'm clever when I when I do. I didn't know that was a thing though. I just thought that people with too much time were like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's what it is: Apgar activity pulse. Grimace, appearance, and respiration. But that was the doctor's name who came up with it as well, which I thought was pretty I awesome. did not know that. Yeah. They're just yeah. like, your baby didn't inhale poop, and he's breathing. Oh, and man. And he doesn't have jaundice. Yay. Aren't you glad you don't remember, like, being born? Like, what if your brain could rem- Nobody. You just remember, like, blah, I, got, I ate my own poop. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> I ate my own poop. Bro. Sam didn't get to eat his own poop. They pulled him out the uh, the front door or the side. I don't know how you you cal- you 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 say That's that. That's technically a back door, but it's not. Right, because when you say back door, everybody thinks butthole, and that's not where babies come from. <laughs> <laughs> escape, escape hatch escape nice hatch. hg oh okay. yes yeah. the emergency every time HG. i say head gamer my brain goes hg and then i imagine him walking with like a black umbrella in london well it's not raining <laughs> but the umbrella is folded up did you watch like, the latest Christ. episode of doctor who in hd um, hd sam sam referred we were trying to go through his letters and we're like what's this letter and he goes h and i'm like well you're not wrong <laughs> yes <laughs> like you're, you're not you're not wrong but you are because we're not from britland so sorry oh i was supposed britland. to ask a british dude something britland? today huh wait what i was supposed to ask a british dude something today from the show last night and i can't remember what it was staring at goats wednesday nights 8 30 p.m is that were you guys saying britland last night on the show yes. is that why it's okay okay yeah okay Steven, it all, it's all, it's all, it all runs together. Cause he wakes, he woke up at 4 30 this morning and wouldn't go back to sleep. There's, yeah, they, I'm sorry. That's awful. When they do that, that's the worst. Cause you were kind of expecting them to stay asleep and then they did. And then you're like, please, good Lord. Like when Sam wanders in our room at six, I'm like, please get into bed and fall asleep. Oh, what is toast in British? Oh, what is to- what is toast? Toast is toast, right? I don't know. That's what Jacob said. No, I think he was. We were looking for what's the British for for biscuits. No, what is something about scones and biscuits? I don't remember. Scone. It's a scone. It's a scone. It's a scone. You know what else is a scone? The factoid. <laughs> in antiquity, <laughs> like as we say, in nice. antiquity. Butter was used for fuel in lamps as a substitute for oil. The Butter Tower of Ruin Cathedral was erected in the early 16th century when Archbishop George Dambu uh, <laughs> authorized the burning of butter instead of oil, which was scarce at the time during Lent. You can burn butter. I look forward to making my butter candle uh, tomorrow and ah! making the house smell like cookies. Oh, Oh, I was so excited. I was so excited. So I, I remember when I used to go to your house and like um, Stephanie would be like, if you watch the baby, I'll make dinner or or mm. I'll clean up something. And I'm like, what the hell's the matter with you? And Jacob was like, well, I'm going to go start dinner. I'm like, you come get this baby. I'm going to make dinner. He's like, good. I wanted to play with the baby. I'm like, that's right. You did. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't get it. So I was all excited. You, you said butter and this is, this yeah, is no, this is perfect. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm good at the story, but I was I'm like, I'm going to make Mediterranean meatballs and I've got the racial good stuff. And it's really exciting. Cause I made. Yes. That I made it for breakfast this morning. It was so good, but I cut up like breakfast sausage and put in it. 
on top of that, my mom and I was I was sitting on them, and I'm like, well, we'll just have a very uh, Middle Eastern kind of food day. And so I made my little meatballs and blah 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 blah. And I was so excited, caramelized my onions, and like 300 pounds of water came out of my meatballs until they just boiled to death in their own juices and all fell apart. So I didn't make meatballs. I made like Mediterranean spaghetti because it was just meat sauce over rice. <laughs> <laughs> and my rice got all gooey and wasn't it was it was like oh. Japanese sticky rice, which I really like, but not for a Mediterranean meal. I'm like, why? I why? Like, no, no. Oh. I can't cook. <laughs> no, you can't. I mean, but I mean, we're under no but you and I don't cook smash no. we don't have that skill but i mean we make people laugh and that's basically like feeding them we're feeding their soul <laughs> which is diff like it's oh, different God. and better if you ask me <laughs> feeding their bellies <laughs> so there uh take that um yeah i you know what i feel for you because i i've tried to make hamburgers for lunch I've tried to make. I can't make food. Uh, the only thing I can make is tacos and spaghetti. That's it. Taco soup. I can make taco soup. I can taco make taco soup. And you I can, can make, make soups. I can make good pies. I can make soups <laughs> and I can make. I can cook. I can make this. I can make this. I can make this. And I'm like, well, look. I've found the things that I can't make, and I'm gonna tell you the secret to knowing whether Stephen can cook it or not. That is if uh, if I if it's a baker if it goes in the oven, uh, or it's a soup, I can probably make it. If it's fried or grilled, no. And the key is you and I probably both have this problem: is there's no timer and there's no precise temperature when you're frying or you're dealing with the grill. Uh -oh. There's the if the, in the oven you can put it in there. And you say 350 for 20 minutes, and you walk away and it goes beep beep beep, and you're like in the middle of something intense. You're like, oh shoot, I was cooking, and you can go back and you can get the thing out. But if your your pot yeah. or your fried thing is on the stove, you go wander off and you're like, oh look at that episode of Sugar Rush on the TV. 15 minutes <laughs> later, oh I burned the grilled cheese sandwiches again. Uh, my B. My so B. that's. That's what it is. It's just that there's a timer and a reminder that you you have a job to do when the timer goes off. Yeah, but this was like, I don't understand. Jacob's like, well, you got to put breadcrumbs in a meatball. And I'm like, but I never do put you? breadcrumbs in this. I didn't know you had to do that. He's like, well, you probably put too much onion in there. I'm like, there's 14 cups of water that came out of there. And I only put half an onion. Like, I don't, I, I what was what, spontaneous fly gestion? Uh, yeah. You know, when they thought flies just spontaneously combusted off the meat, what was that spontaneous <laughs> generation? Was that it? Spontaneous? Oh, yes. Yes. Because the, the water yeah. just spontaneously generated from my meat. And I'm like, <laughs> what is where this? did you come from? Why are you boiling yourself? You not boil, you fry. <laughs> you are doing it wrong, meat. What are we going um, to do with you? spontaneous gener yeah they thought uh they thought that flies grew out of rotten meat because that's where the maggots went and the flies laid their their eggs and stuff i understand why they felt like that i mean it's so easy to look back i'm like oh those those imbecilic uneducated plebes and i'm like where'd the water come from <laughs> yeah yeah right and i mean to be fair to them they looked and they observed their world and they saw a behavior and they made a logical conclusion i still think it's a logical conclusion it's a wrong one but it's logical oh oh shoot that's how flies are created okay i mean granted this was like medieval times we should have known better by then good gravy i swear we'd made zero progress until like the year 1700 and then we were like oh Let's think about the world we live in. And then it was just like off to the races. Because before that, like everything was basically the same for a billion years. It was, it was religious persecution, man. You weren't allowed to have a scientific thought because Jesus doesn't like science, according to 19, wait, to, to 1450 <laughs> churches. I mean, how about this? According to 2020 we churches. If burning we're... people. <laughs> Yeah. alive we we may have made some uh progress forward oh god so you know human history is full of jacked up things 
stupid. We're so we're, stupid. We're a bunch of idiots. We're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Think we know what we're doing. People have always been stupid. Let's do some world news. Let's get, let's figure out how stupid people are. <laughs> A Swiss town coated in cocoa powder after a factory glitch. This sounds delicious. Uh, get me a marshmallow and a graham cracker, and we're going to have some fun. Residents Yay. of the Swiss town got a bit of a shock when it started snowing particles of fine cocoa powder after the ventilation system at a chocolate factory malfunctioned. The Lint and Sprugli Company confirmed local reports Tuesday that there was a minor defect in the cooling ventilation for a line for roasted cocoa nibs in its factory in Olten between Zurich and Basel. Uh, combined with strong Bingo! winds on Friday morning, the powder spread around the immediate vicinity of the factory, leaving the fine cocoa dusting. Factory production was able to continue as normal, and the company says the particles were completely harmless to people or the environment. The ventilation system has now been repaired. Dogs everywhere are like, cocoa powder! And you're like, no, you're going to die. Stop it. Do they have dogs in Switzerland? <laughs> I don't know. Probably don't not. I don't know. They might, it's hard to tell. And now I want to know, like, what the most popular dog <laughs> Cloudy Tiffa said Cloudy with a chance of chocolate rain. <laughs> chocolate <laughs> rain. That was Made beautiful. from Her Hershey King of chocolate drinks, chocolate rain. That was, oh, the St. Bernard's. We knew that. Steven that, and I are smart. We knew that. That, that was, that was. <laughs> so St. Bernard a Swiss dog? Maybe they were imported. <laughs> Those are the those things are enormous. Like you don't realize how big they are until they're in a boat right next to you, and you're like, you take up the entire boat. You should be able to push a dog away from you if you don't want it there. And if it's bigger enough, bigger that you can't do that, uh, then you need to rethink your dog. Rethink your dog. Can that be the show title? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's better to rethink your dong, which is also a thing you might need to do a time time. <laughs> so, um, Vash, we've got Marco Polo, and every once in a while we'll Marco Polo each other. And he said he's got a 3D printer, and he showed me this little penis he printed out. He's like, Look, I have a 3D printer. I'm like, You wasted your time, energy, electricity, and your supplies printing out a small, dark gray, gray dong. So you can glue it to Lego men. I it's don't. Like it's. <laughs> What they did to it, it Ken was, was a grave injustice. The Lego man, the Lego man would have like, I don't. There, nobody would have sex with Lego man with a wiener that big because they would die. <laughs> what like, if there's not it... enough lube out there? <laughs> what if you put it on Ken? Like it gave Ken back his wiener. Like, would that be okay? <laughs> and everybody prints penises. I mean, that's what you do. I, let me tell you a story. I we have. <laughs> We have a uh, we have a, a video chat system at work, and if you video chat with someone and they share their screen, you can draw on it. They can control <laughs> it, but by default, you can draw on it. I draw all over everybody's screens <laughs> when they have it up there. Can I tell you how difficult it is not to draw a penis on their screen when I'm talking to them? It's <laughs> real hard. Because the first place my mind goes is like, I could draw balls. Oh, wait. Nope. Going to make that into a walrus. Look at that. It's a walrus now. It's not a ball. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. I'm so happy. I remember after high school, we'd run out to each other's cars and uh, try to get there fat first so you could draw on your friend's car. And on Patrick's bet rear window, it was real dusty one time. And I drew a big old weeder on the back of it. At our Christian school parking lot. He was like, what have you done? I was like, nothing. What are you talking about? It's a rocket it was ship. It's your fault, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was great. It was the best time. He did it to me, Who's too. Sam Kin... 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 Sam Kinison. Yeah. yeah. It's like, is that a... Chris... I can't read on the dark because it's far away. And yeah, Sam Kinison was a like... comic... Uh, a comedian back in the early 90s famous for yelling angrily and then he got into a lot of drugs and had an accident in his corvette it's bad news it's a tragic loss gone too soon thanks for that head gamer <laughs> he was a pentecostal pastor he was a pentecostal pastor and then he went out out to la and became a uh, 
uh, a comic who, were, who was going to change the landscape of stand-up comedy because he was the first one to to just be angry on stage. Most American comedy is all like, I'm smart and condescending and intellectual. You intellectualize everything. And he was really? very raw, so people paid attention to him. Raw! Raw! raw. I the hate that! The of Gigheim has joined the Legion of Dogs! Hello, Sorry. friend! Yeah. <laughs> I heard dog. Okay, so if you, would you, pre did you ever watch Invader Zim? I took I took out the fuel to make room for the tuna. Oh my god, I love it so <laughs> Do you remember the episode where he ordered the germ goggles and you could like 3D print the germ goggles and I'm like, oh, what a, what a funny piece of future that'll never happen and now we're like, please print me a wrench. Sub hasn't heard of Invader Zim. Why do I feel like Sub would like Invader Zim? Sub would like Invader... I mean, he'd have to stop playing WoW for five minutes to watch it, but... Okay, he remembers it. Never mind. I was like, I don't even like cartoons and I would what Invader Zim was. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Oh, gosh. I forgot that he was. He had Gur as his, his avatar. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'm gullible, man. You tell me something, and I don't believe you have any reason to lie, so I'll believe you. I believe my friends. Oh, my God, Sub, I miss you. You should come stay with us again. It's a joke, you nerds. You're a nerd. <laughs> I... Oh. I don't even... I don't... You want to read a second story? Because my yes. brain broke after all that. Head gamer wanted to know if I was having a white Russian, uh, and I have, I have nothing. How about you go get a drink while I read the story? It's fine. I'll just eat my tongue. Um, but uh, well, hurry, you know, because it's nine thirty. I'm real excited for the beach because I'm gonna start on Saturday, Sunday when we check in. I'm gonna put a beer in my hand. I'm not gonna put it down until we leave on Saturday. I mean, I will to get a new one, but I'm gonna just. <laughs> If, if we like, bring it, that's gonna be a nasty beer. If we bring a keg, I could just duct tape the solo cup to my hand and then just keep filling it up. <laughs> <laughs> Red solo cup. Go fill it's gonna you be. Up. It's gonna be so cold, Steven. I'm like, there's, there's this little wetsuit, like this shorty wetsuit, and I'm like, I'm gonna get it so I can <laughs> swim like a rash guard just to stay just no warm it's enough. like a legit neoprene <laughs> wetsuit and i'm like because i don't know where the hell my other wetsuit well i never had like a wetsuit wetsuit i had i had the rash guard like footy thing but we never had the like legit wetsuits I, I, that would be yes, pretty extreme did. to be in a wetsuit yes, to swim in a pool <laughs> i've had people tell me that the beach in october is great but i've been a few times and it wasn't great for the swimming Plus, like it's seventy five degrees here this week. Like it's it's not warm. It's cold. It's it's yeah. cold. My my butthole has frost rings. I'm like Saturn. Wait, what mm. is what's the what has frost rings? Uh, Uranus has Uranus has frost rings. <laughs> 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 Why did I think that was that? That was so good. It's cold uh, for the pool, Travis. 75 is cold for the pool. It's not cold in general. It's cold for swimming. 75, I'm comfortable wearing, like, shorts and a sweater. Yeah. Stephen and I don't, don't like, 60, Stephen and I are, like, full bundled. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. And anything below 60 is stupid. Oh, yeah. 70 and below, I'm in pants and, like, a, a light jacket. Uh, yes. But then below 60, I'm, like, in a thick hoodie and jeans and inside where i can make the temperature warmer yes well inside where we've got access to blankets because those that we live with do not make gosh do scientists just like being freaking cold all the time like is it their heat coming off of their brain brain from all the power that it holds and they have to <laughs> cool down is that what like you know how i you don't gotta... know maybe that's it because because some can't stand to be like hot either Gosh, it's like if you have a you have a processor that's really powerful, it's putting out a lot of energy, it puts out a lot of heat. Me and you, we basically go comatose when we're not doing the show, so 
We get cold. Uh, yeah, the, the fan's on right now. I'm like, I can feel my back turning into ice right now. I have sweatpants on, too, and I'm just like, man, I should have mm-hmm. got my sweater. It's in my room. I think room I just like to have fuzzy, fuzzy stuff on me. Like, I don't like to be exposed. I like to be nice yeah. and covered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to read a story now. Good job. I want to be cozy. Florida condo for sale. It's Budweiser cans covering the walls and ceiling. Um, Seems legit. I'm going to click on that and look at the picture. I oh! looked at that beer can house in Houston once. Is that it like, is, it, is it made of That's beer pretty. cans? It's not pretty. That's impressive. It's well overwhelmingly done. Overwhelmingly distracting. I think it looks uh, a great. A for a condo in Florida is going viral <laughs> after pictures were posted online showing off an unusual aspect of the decor. The walls and ceiling of the home were covered in Budweiser beer cans. <laughs> Realtor Kristen Kearney, may she rot, because all realtors can suck a butt, said she initially didn't know what to expect when she received a call about listing the Lake Worth condo. Sorry if you're a realtor. No, nah, there, there's no realtors here. And they're probably cooler than all the realtors we've dealt with. <laughs> they warned me that the home was wallpapered in beer cans. And I thought to myself, well, I wonder where the world they found beer can wallpaper. Oh, uh, <laughs> the reality of reality of the home turned out to be far stranger. The wallpaper was actual beer cans. Gertie said the cans cover every wall and ceiling of the home except for the bathroom. If you look closely at the photos, you can really see the links the owner went to. He even created crown molding. We eventually, we actually received multiple offers. It's currently under contract, and I have a backup offer as well. Of course you do, because... You know. <laughs> I don't understand. How much, how much square footage does that probably take away? If you imagine a beer can's what, an inch and a half? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Because it would you, lower the ceiling. Lower the ceiling and shrink every room by an inch and a half or two all the way around. I mean, do you got to pay for that square footage? Because I don't think so. That stuff's the know. wall I'm, at that point. You I'm don't want to break it. Photos. Contingent. I, I mean, good. Maybe somebody really loves beer. Oh my god, even the even the outside lights. He's got uh Budweiser bottles. <laughs> like glass bottles. I'm looking at the, and he's got a Budweiser sticker on his patio. Oh my god, every every square inch of this house except the floor is covered in okay kevin are you looking at the listing pictures show them the listing pictures it's so stupid i'm not looking at the listing pictures i don't it's too, it's too much work for me yeah, okay <laughs> where are the list where are the listing listing photos wow okay. real tour this dude is like this dude is i don't understand he Let's doesn't have works. children or his children left Okay, the cameras are all jacked, but this is it. Oh, Lord. Somebody left. That's a lot of... I mean, the house looks nice uh, outside of the beer. When you get to the kitchen, Oh, my word, it's everywhere. Sorry for you audio, you guys, but this house, you'll find it in the show notes. But, oh, man, he did the closet. He did the walk-in closet with beer cans. Bathroom's nice. Why is your cans are not not pretty? He didn't I'm make just it like, to the if bathrooms. you're gonna spend that much time, then like update your effing kitchen. <laughs> no, you remember that time I I drank the the forty ounce on the show back in like 2010 because my dad gave me that deer hat and. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the deer hat. That was a good time. Hat, that was a good special cup. section. <laughs> Man who found a Jelly Belly name to give away Candy Factory as part of a gold ticket treasure hunt. Oh, snap. The founder of the name Jelly Belly is launching a series of golden ticket treasure hunts across the country before his retirement. Think Willy Wonka with a twist. David Klein announced the contest in a video message online saying the big winner will walk away with the key to their very own candy factory in development. Not affiliated with Fairfield, California-based Jelly Belly. Thousands of dollars in prizes are also up for grabs. Klein says gold tickets are being hidden in secret locations throughout the U.S. You'll be looking for a gold ticket in the form of a necklace with a tag that includes a code you need to use to verify your find. Winners will receive $5,000, but only one person will win the grand prize. The contest is not free. 
Those who wish to participate will need to pay about $50 to receive their state's riddle. There's also a gold ticket Facebook group. Hey, y'all want to win a candy factory? I can I can scrounge up some money. Y'all want to go in on a, a golden ticket? I wonder how much money he's going to make from this if everybody sends in $50 oh, when the lot. cash prize is only five grand. I, no, you know how many people are going to give him $50? All it takes you is know, 10 people to get 500 bucks. Yeah. You know, like, unless somebody gets the riddle and then just posts it online somewhere, and then you're like, you didn't pay for it at all. Yeah, that is, well, I mean, you'd have to be in their state. I don't know. Well, nobody would want the help, though. They would want the money for themselves. Tudor's yeah. Candy Factory. We cover a bunch of states already. <laughs> what if? Yeah. What if we had a can, two dorks candy factory and we could produce our own candy bars? I don't, two dorks candy I don't. bars, horseshoes and hand grenade bars, and it'll be like what, what? If you could make a candy bar, what would it be? Oh, I'd just recreate the Wonka bar that came out with back in like two thousand four. It was a chocolate bar with graham cracker in it. Oh, it so good. Really? Landon bought me a Landon bought me a case of them for my birthday. Aww, it was the greatest. Only true friends give each other diabetes. <laughs> a chocolate hand grenade filled with raspberry or something. Oh my God, Zafo! Yes, a uh, um a raspberry filled hand grenade and a caramel filled horseshoe. Ah! <laughs> oh, caramel! I'm I'm down with that. That sounds great. That sounds great. And uh, we'd have to figure out some sort of goat thing. <laughs> it's made with goat's milk. It's little no, it's like instead of it's like M and M's, but they're round like little goat poops. They're little goat poops in a bag. <laughs> staring at goats poops. Staring at goats poops. It, <laughs> <laughs> uh, goat poop. Oh, that's great. Uh, so, what is this? News bear left the toll. <laughs> Yeah, of course they're all brown. What color would you want them to be? I don't understand. They're goat poops. You know? Staring at goat poops. Staring goat poops. Old Miss put a porn star on its cups honoring healthcare heroes for this season. Uh, Old Miss. Whoops. They didn't know. For its souvenir cups at football games this season, the University of Mississippi decided to commemorate its Old Miss heroes by putting healthcare workers on the design. That yeah, seems like a great idea and honors a lot of people, right? Just one problem. They included male porn star Johnny Sins. You think that's his given name? It's his birth name, Johnny Sins? Johnny Sins. There's lots of... I wonder if he's he's related to any other Sins. Uh, as you might imagine, the image of the cup and the news of the accident went viral. It was an easy mistake to make, though, to just grab stock images of doctors. Stephen Wolf, who's also known as Johnny Sins. Aha! Stephen Wolf's also a porno name. Why did you change it to Johnny Sins? Stephen Wolf yeah, sounds right? like the super porn name. That's the porniest yeah, porn name I've ever like heard. Big, the Big Bad Wolf. It's like Johnson Le Balls. Uh, you know, like <laughs> that's Johnson. what. You... Um, how did anybody find the porn star in this freaking cup picture? There's a billion people on it, and it's all faded out, and it's in red. Some people have an encyclopedic knowledge of their porn stars. I guess. If, the only Miss. one I know of is Stormy Daniels for obvious reasons. Was she a porn star or a stripper? See, I don't this even is, know what she looks like. She was Donald Trump's uh, yeah, lady friend who wasn't really a friend, but was just like, I'm going to tolerate you because you're rich. It's one of them, them things. <laughs> what did we get here? Hold on. Kelly was blocked by posting dirty messages. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the term broke back? Broke back is a blocked term in Twitch chat? That's broken. That's stupid. That's Wait, what stupid happened? Thing. Kelly got auto modded in the chat for using the word broke back. Is that like a <laughs> slur or something? I don't know. <laughs> Did you see I the never dude? watched the movie. Did Wasn't you see the, the dude? Was who it was, yeah, Broke Back Mountain. It was about two cowboys wrestling with who they really were. Uh, did you see the dude who claimed life should be simple with cowboys out in the fields with cows and no liberals anywhere around to prove his point and he used to pick for Brokeback Mountain? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing is when people try to be like, oh, I'm anti all this blah, 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 and then they use either words or things or imagery 
that gets them into trouble. And it's like, dude, you're everything about what you are is wrong right now in this in this moment. It's pretty great. Dude up the road, uh, for me, made a homemade sign. He's got like how many signs does he have, Ashley? Like ten. Oh my gosh! The whole got... house, the whole house. Those signs are huge too. Those yeah. signs are huge. There's a there's, he's got two Trump flags, like full size American flag level Trump flags. He doesn't have an American flag on his house, just to be clear. But he's got two giant Trump flags. He's got a Law and Order sign. He's got an anarchy uh, anarchist or losers sign of some kind. He's got all these other little signs. Now he's got cameras because people were stealing his signs. And then he's got a new homemade sign that says "See it in lies, fake news." <laughs> I'm yes like, it's like one of those like birth announcement like uh so marquee stupid. sign thing and i'm like dude i've had cordial conversations with you and now i think you're an idiot and this is not how i want to feel about you like why did you need signs also i'm real curious why pence's name isn't on anything anymore it's really i guess it's it's stealing too much flair uh to have two people's names on there it's really fascinating to me just a little I observation don't... We don't have I used about to it. watch like all the the late night show stuff on YouTube, and I haven't in weeks because I just gave up. I'm like, if this is just <laughs> this is too much, it's I'm too done. much to handle. Anyway, let's get back to this porn star. Uh... <laughs> Stephen Wolf, who's known as Johnny Sins, heard of the news and shared a personal video basically thanking the Rebels by saying he's honored. I'm honored to be an old Miss hero on the 2020 Stadium Cup. He said, I'm no hero, just a guy who plays one. But like a doctor, you have to be ready to rise to the occasion. So from your 2020 old Miss hero, I have one question for you. Are you ready? Clever. Clever, clever, <laughs> clever. Which one on here is it? How did they pick him out in this? Oh, you're right. This this cup sucks. Okay, so go to the other picture. Like, there's one right beside it. He's the bald dude. Yeah, but, but I don't. I don't know how they found him. Flipping close to find him, and to know that was a porn star guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm just like. Okay, where, you got to be pretty well the, versed I'm, in your porn. Where's Waldo? Things, you know. I mean, maybe some people I'm are just to like. I'm trying picture on the cup, but I don't see it. They're in the Johnny Sins. Oh, it's the fan very. Club. It's the very top. Right. It's one, two, three, four over from the right. The Did top. Chris Evans really post his wiener? I didn't see the picture and I got confused and didn't understand what was happening. Wait, Did what Chris, happened? Did Captain America's wing wing get posted on the internet? Like and it was it his are we sure it was his wiener or is it somebody else's wiener? Everybody when? says Chris How? Evans' wiener got Why? posted on the thing. I think it, it, he said it was an accident. He never said whether it was his wiener. But he did spin it pretty well and got a lot of kudos for it. Because after that, uh, oh, he was showing something else, and there was a wiener pic on his phone. Oh, okay. The good old... So he didn't actually post anything? The old, I have a phone in my in the background that has America's my wiener on America's wiener on his Insta. <laughs> he posted uh, after that, though. He, he tweeted, well, now that I have your attention, go vote. So he spun it, uh, and it was pretty good. Oh. It's pretty nice. good. Yeah, it was pretty good. So, I mean, hey, if you're really into Captain America's uh, secrets, <laughs> that's my secret, Cap. I have a wiener. I mean, once you've seen one, you've seen them all, right? I mean, it's they're ugly, but practical. <laughs> okay. They're... It's not... Having an external sex organ doesn't seem practical. I mean, the balls gone... part isn't... It's gone. Yeah, but you gotta have a way to get the view, the the business to the destination. And the only way to do that safely is to dock <laughs> the properly at the spaceport. You know what I mean? I feel I feel like they should be stored internally, and something should like open up. <laughs> like how we're redesigning intercourse. Or <laughs> hand grenades. Something should open up. To, we should be like fish. Women should just lay eggs on the floor and men should come along and splatter stuff on them. 
<laughs> actually. It's not a bad idea. It's really not. Oh, Fish- it makes so much more sense. So then the babies could grow outside of us, and I would leave it on the stove, and it would catch on fire. <laughs> you would. Awful. You would. You'd be like, I don't feel like eggs this morning. Jacob, where are the babies? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're so cute last night he woke up when he woke up at 4 30 and i was trying to rock him back to sleep for an hour because i'm like bullshit we're not getting up you are not pulling this crap and i'm like well, i hope jacob enjoys his fucking kid because he's not gonna get another freaking this is it i'm done you one and done anybody has more than two kids is freaking insane or just it's long enough out that they're like what I had too many beers and forgot to pull out. That's what happens. As no one has two killed kids on purpose, <laughs> be insane. Don't if no. you say you did, you're lying to yourself. You made it a mistake somewhere along the way. You're like, we we got a night alone by ourselves. Oh shoot, we forgot the things. Yeah, but we're by ourselves. Oh baby, it's cool. I'll take care of it. You know? No, no. You yeah, didn't. or you end up like oddly. You're like, we're pregnant. Cliff twist. <laughs> Kelly says intercourse is perfect the way it is. Now reproduction needs a fix. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly said we were Adam. Christina made us have to. Christina. Christina made you. Why? Yeah. Why? I love him. He's the cutest, most wonderful, sweet thing on the planet. And I want to squish his face. But dear Jesus, when he wakes up in the middle of the night, I'm like, no and he does this thing too where he flails his hand and he hits me in the face and i'm like don't bite his hand off don't bite his hand off don't bite it just don't and i actually like have to calm myself because my initial reaction to getting hit in the face is doom and i'm like (laughs) so i just swallow the doom and eventually everyone's gonna die swallow the doom that was malignant (laughs) corporate overlords number one hit of 1987 uh swallow the doom (laughs) Uh, yeah, for me, it's just, I'm just waiting until COVID's over so I can go get my nuts snipped on. <laughs> and then, get this, I'm sitting with your dad. He knows that this is eventually the 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 thing, and he goes, he goes, you know what? Getting vasectomy is what gives you prostate cancer. And I was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? He goes, he goes that's what does it. I said, now, that is there research behind this? Yes. I'm like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Stephanie, Stephanie, just, just, just getting your, getting a vasectomy, give you prostate. She's like, no, that's stupid. I was like, I know, but go prove it for me. Cause I need you to prove it. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, but now you're in charge of making sure that this is not you're right. You're the medical, you're the medical person. Like you have to tell me if this is a thing. It's not a thing. It's, it's completely, basically it was this non-controlled test from the sixties that said men who have had vasectomies get prostate cancer. But every man who lives long enough gets prostate cancer. So it was like, there's no real correlation. There's just, it's in there. There's the and correlation, but there's no evidence. There's no evidence that one thing. So no, it was ever uh, a Harvard, or no, the Mayo Clinic said there's zero evidence that having one causes a more likely uh, scenario. And I'm like, okay, well, good. Then we're fine now. Everything's fine. The plan continues. <laughs> gotta go get Jacob. them nuts dealt with i've done well, all Jacob, of this. i've done all the Jacob, research i don't know that jacob's listening he probably he, isn't he's like you don't listening? you talk about this what, do we need to get your nuts trimmed <laughs> <laughs> it's outpatient easy peasy you go in they do the thing you go well that if was easy you ever want to have again without having to pull out you'll get your nuts trimmed <laughs> <laughs> I like how you refer to it as a nut trim like it, that's... you get your nuts trimmed <laughs> you get your nuts trimmed WTF <laughs> <laughs> WTF oh it's me well, me. Zafo did it and uh... went to a Red Sox game in Dallas on the same day so there's different did methods, he, he... right? The, back, if you got a vasectomy back in 1940, it sucked. Now it's apparently they got it where it's almost just easy peasy, no big deal. They did. I mean, I ways. feel like there's no good way to do anything to your body 
to make it do what it doesn't want to do. Yeah. But this is but probably also, the easiest. But also, I'm not having a second child because <laughs> I want to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having a second one because I don't want one. I like the one I got. He's great. How do you, great. How does it work? Like, if you, okay, you're like one child. This is awesome. You've got all my attention and love and squishes. But, like, if you have a second kid, because he requires so, so much attention and so much everything. So I'm like, okay, so if he was two, like, am I going to ignore him for a year to make sure the other baby is okay? Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> they learn how to be independent that way. What? We didn't have my little sister till I was six. So I was just like, I'm going to go play at my friend's house. And they're like, good. <laughs> I'm like, okay, bye. Oh, Easy. Oh, man. I don't, uh, I'm too young for this shit. Virginia man gets permission to be buried in juicy fruit themed casket. Why would you need permission for that? Because of the, I, yeah. the trademark? Oh, yeah. You can't use their logos. Oh, a 90 I need pictures. A 94-year-old Virginia man with a lifelong love of juicy fruit. Juicy fruit is pretty good for three chews. Has received permission from the Mars Wrigley Company to have his casket painted to resemble a pack of chewing gum. Sooty economy. Please, dear God, is that a name? Suddy. Suddy economy. Or is Suddy, it Sudi? That's not I that's neither one or a name. That's not no. a name. That <laughs> sounds like, like that's a country. Like a bug <laughs> removal service. <laughs> Steven, we went on a walk. So I had the baby and Sam and mom and Stephanie. We were on a walk, right? And so we walk facing oncoming traffic. So we walk against flow so cars can't sneak up behind us, right? Like, that's the side of the road you walk on. So this car, this nasty, ugly, like, diarrhea, poopy brown car just starts rolling up on us. And we're like... You getting out the Glock? We go around, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe he's gonna stop and ask for directions, which is really annoying because COVID, and I have a baby and a five year old and my mother, and like, f off, right? And so I'm like, I look behind us, and there's a a male car on the other side, so he's all the way over blocking the the where we're walking, and then the mail trucks on this side. And I'm like, I guess we'll walk around you since you won't go around the pedestrians. So we walk around him and he's just sitting there looking at us. And then like, he keeps inching forward because he never really stops. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's just like an exterminator. It was the, I won't say the name of the company, but I, I hope this guy never works for them again. Never mind. Keep your job, dude. You just learn how to drive. Um, <laughs> I like how you went just, from, from like absolute hate to like, well, okay, fine. I know you just did a thing. That was really good. That's a well, lot of maturity there. Well, nobody needs to lose their job right now. The economy's stupid, so I, I that's where my brain. <laughs> I hope you get a hemorrhoid. But it was so annoying. I'm like, you just keep creeping up on us. I'm like, just stop. If you have to stop directly in front of us, let us walk around you, especially with oncoming traffic. And like, but like, why would you keep moving? Like, I'm going to take my baby out of the stroller and hit your car with it. The stroller, not the oh, baby. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> a lot of force. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, city economy. I'm sorry. We developed a love for Wrigley's chewing gum while serving in World War II when the company took juicy fruit and other varieties of gum off the market so there would be enough to distribute to U.S. service members. He brought his lovely he brought his love of juicy fruit home with him, friends and family said. Oki these names are made up. Oki, president of Oki's funeral service, said he determined that he would need permission from the Mars Wrigley Company to use the imagery on a casket. The company no, no, initially no. refused. Wait. Oki missed an opportunity to call his funeral home the Okie Dokie funeral home. Which would be the best name for a funeral home in the history of funeral. I'd be like, yes, I'd like to be buried at Okie Dokie Funeral. <laughs> These are the stupidest names I've ever heard. <laughs> Okie and Sooty, Sooty Economy. How is your last name Economy? <laughs> is he from Skokie? 
Spokane? <laughs> stupid name. They're all, this is so stupid. Ugh. The company initially refused the request because they're all heartless bastards that needed a heart transplant, leading the funeral home to post about the efforts on Facebook. Post went viral because, you know, Oki's funeral service, and a member of the public was able to get Oki contact information for the company's president. Oki said he received a call from the vice president of Mars Wrigley a few days later, giving permission to use the logo on the casket. President reached out the next week to tell Oki he was being sent some products for the economy family. The family received 250 packs of juicy fruit. You know, these the are family dire. didn't give a shit. <laughs> the study economy wanted it. This is these are dire times, and it means a lot that the Mars Wrigley Company can afford to send 250 packs of gum to the Oki Doki funeral <laughs> <laughs> for the economy family. So the are so can, weird. Dude, you could say that the Wrigley the Wrigley company was able to support economy with 250 packs of bubblegum. <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Steven. Oh my god, you're gonna wake up at two in the morning laughing about this, aren't you? <laughs> That's going to be on their next brochure. The here at Mars Wrigley, we support economy. There's a typo. Nope, we use John Economy. <laughs> what the hell <laughs> names are these? <laughs> I want Juicy Fruit now. Oh my gosh, Juicy Fruit sucks. It, you can taste it for 20 seconds. For 20 What's seconds. That? Three chews and you're done. <laughs> Spit it out. Oh gosh. You know, Kathy are so stupid but like they're so stupid so just put me in a fucking box like are you gonna dig me back up why do i need to be in a box like why do i need to be in a fancy effing box to make your pet family feel better about putting you in the so, ground well, Steven, would you feel better if i was a rotting corpse in a fancy box you'll literally forget what it looked like or a no. rotting corpse in a box that didn't cost anybody anything i'm gonna set you on fire and put you in a coffee can <laughs> Damn right you are. If and you it better be bulletproof coffee with butter on top. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't burn me and put me in some silly receptacle for my ashes, I'll be upset. I want to be put in like a giant clown shoe or something. Like I don't. Know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get a size 13 pair of red vans. And red stick red you in a bag chucks. And just you. Give me, give me some yeah, red it's chucks. chucks. Oh, man, sorry. Yeah, big dumb red chucks. Throw me in the ocean. I don't care. I'm not here anymore. I'm dead. You do what makes you feel better. And if you spend five thousand dollars on putting me in the ground, we'll punch you. That's you gotta... like bare minimum five grand for a box. Yes, subject. Please use my skull for rituals. That would be the best thing. Like he's just drinking wine out of my skull as he's playing his D and D game. <laughs> they just collect pieces of the dorks. Like I'll take Steven's left leg and Ashley's head, and one day when we can necro them, we'll grow them into one one weird monster. Oh my god! Get entertained. I don't want to be Jeff. <laughs> Oh, uh, Callie and Christina, yes. I've wanted to be a tree forever. I'm like, you can decorate me on holidays as opposed to a grave. Like, yay, yeah, you stuck flowers in my grave. But on Halloween, hang a jack-o'-lantern from my limb, bitches. That would be so cool. <laughs> that would be cool. I want to be a tree. Yes. We, right? had to cut, we cut down six trees in our yard yesterday, and it was the wildest thing. They used a crane. Smash, they put a man on a crane and lifted him into the air. And he wrapped ropes around the top of a tree and they lifted it out of the way so they could chop it into pieces. This is the coolest thing. I was so excited. I was running back and forth over the house because they worked in the backyard and front yard. And I was like, ah, they cut down trees. This is Were crazy. Like, right. I love how you sent pictures of the stumps, but they all look like tree buttholes. Yeah, well, the one stump, we found out that one tree, the big one in the backyard, was rotted, like, all the way through. All the way th I saw all that. I'm like, through. that's that's hollow in the middle. That's bad news. When the top fell off, all the, the tippy-tippy top crumbled, and, like, bugs ran out of it. Ooh. Yeah, it was dead, or gonna be, in the near future. But, man, they were, like, they were machines. They were just chopping. <laughs> 
Like the little ones, I sit there and agonize for days. Like, how am I going to cut that so it doesn't fall on anything? And they're just out there like, look once, look twice. <laughs> knocked it over. Moved on. I'm like, okay. That's well, I mean, they, they have to because if they knock it on your house, they what? what is it, Jeffrey? Christina. You don't want to know. You should go rewatch all the Dungeons and Dorks episodes to find out what Jeffrey, Jeffrey is. Jeffrey's a Jeffrey's a mismatch of dead body parts that subject put together in a D and D campaign and carried around in a backpack. And he's right though. Jeffrey, Jeffrey did, did more damage. <laughs> Suck a butt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. What? Thank you for joining us tonight in Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. I was tired before I started, and I've had some of the best laughs of my entire day uh, just now. And it's because of you guys. Um, Ashley has very little to do with it, if we're being honest. Uh, <laughs> it's, no, you guys are awesome. Ashley's awesome. This show is awesome. I'm happy to be here. Uh, if you're happy to be here and want to tell people about it, consider podcasting reviews putting a review on the websites that you listen to this podcast on or get it from uh, five stars to say, these guys are funny. Blah, 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 blah. That'd be awesome. Cause we're old. It's hard for us to get traction when you're 526 episodes in. Uh, I'm you like, can also, you're old shit. You, we've only been doing this show like near 15 years. Uh, follow us on Twitter at two dorks TV. I'm Steve H and H Ashley is fate kills P H A T E kills. And you can also uh, contribute to our Patreon over there. Patreon.com slash two dorks. Where you can join our friends Hammer Dwarf and Og and Adam and uh, and uh, Hammer Dwarf, an oddly normal one, and our parents, uh, giving us a little bit of money to help pay for the stuff on the show. Even a dollar counts. If you're subbing with Twitch, uh, like Groove is, and like Sub is, uh, and like Zafo is, and all the other people that are subbing that I don't have a list of right in front of me, Kelly is, <laughs> Travis is, that's also a huge support. And we appreciate that uh, just as much. You're amazing. For tossing that our way, it really helps us out a bunch, um, and we it means it means the world that you would put that that money here. Uh, we're gonna leave you these words of wisdom from Julia Child, who said, "Life is too short for fake butter or fake people." She's right. You can't change the people around you, but you can change the people around you. You know what I mean? Thank you guys so much. <laughs> for joining us here on Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.